Now, who, who's going to be celebrating uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow? I mean, really celebrating. Who's going to really be eating a lot of food? Anybody? Just a few, huh? The rest of you are on diets or what? <laughs> you're, just, you're going to be cooking it and everyone else is going to be eating it, right? So no one's going to eat turkey tomorrow. Well, that just blows everything, doesn't it? Why are you celebrating Thanksgiving for then? Isn't it for the food? No? Okay. Well, I mean, I was leading up to a joke, but you guys just blew it. I thought you were all supposed to go, yeah, we're all going to eat and, you know, I mean, turkey and stuffing. And one of the favorites uh, part of Thanksgiving for me is the stuffing. I love my mom's stuffing. Not that I don't love your stuffing, but my mom, actually, it's the old-fashioned way, the old school where you stick the stuffing in the turkey. I don't know if you knew that, but you can stick it in there, and it actually cooks with the turkey, which means all the juices go through the stuffing. And so when it comes out, it's very, uh, it looks like mashed potatoes, but man, is it good. It's the bomb. There's an old word to use there. I mean, oh, my mouth's already drooling thinking about it. So that's one of my favorite uh dishes there. You you know how you can tell when someone has has really had too much Thanksgiving food? You know how you can tell? When they reach reach around their waist and they they pull the bathrobe open. That's when they that's when you know they had way too much Thanksgiving dinner. Not just, you know, loosen the belt, but the bathrobe. You know, I feel like that on Thanksgiving we'll be going to uh, church, and then we'll be going to my son's house and having another Thanksgiving. So we got two tomorrow, and then I was just talking to Rosalind. They've got three to go to. And then Black Friday all night long, too. So, boy, that's going to be an interesting day for them. But we'll be in Psalms 105, so let's uh, turn our Bibles there, and let's look at Psalms 105. Uh, praises to God for His wonderful care for Israel. For Israel. We really don't know who the author is it doesn't say a psalm of david like a lot of the other psalms do or any other musician that played with david but i think that when we look at the psalm itself and we cross-reference it with chronicles first chronicles 16 8 through 22 we will find that the verses used in this psalm are the same verses used in chronicles which tells us that we know david wrote chronicles and that was about david's life as he was um there in Jerusalem with the tabernacle. And so we can kind of guess that it was probably David who wrote this psalm and was remembering the wonderful works of God as he looked at the history of the children of Israel. Psalms 105 and 106 are are actually hymns of history. Hymns of history. They're songs of history and what God has done uh, for his people. Uh, This history is preserved in song, making it even more memorable for them. There's something about singing that just kind of helps you remember the truth. Uh, Some of the old hymns uh, really would bring out a storyline or a thought that we remember the old rugged cross and it puts you right there at the cross of Jesus, you know, watching and seeing as he was crucified upon that cross. And those hymns just have a way of doing it. The the, the Hebrews, the Jews were able to do that with these Psalms, uh, bringing about history and and so forth. So, So 105 recounts what God has done for his people, declares how God was faithful, and it shows the goodness and grace of God in their lives. The psalmist traces the history of the nation from Abraham all the way to the settlement into the land of Canaan. And so when you start with Abraham there in Genesis, he goes all the way to the time when they entered into the land of Canaan. and He recounts this history and how God has worked among the people. He looks at Abraham's life and how God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm calling you out of the land of the Chaldeans this this Gentile world, and I'm going to set you on a path that you're going to be a great nation. And I will make a covenant with you. I will promise you that this great nation will come from you, and that work will be done by me and me alone. It has nothing to do with you. It, all that it has to do with you is that I've chosen you to rep- represent me as your God and King, and you will be my chosen people. And so he made a covenant with Abraham, and the story tells us that that God had um, taken an animal, and he was going to sacrifice it as a covenant between them two. But at that time, he 
put Abraham asleep and God walked between the two uh, pieces of the animal signifying that it was God's covenant. Normally what would happen is two individuals make a covenant and they would walk through together uh, the sacrifice animal that was shed um, in his blood and so forth agreeing both to fulfill both their covenants. But in this case it was God who walked through. As Abraham woke up he saw a, a path of fire right through the animal itself signifying that it was God's covenant with his children which meant that God would keep his promise and that promise would be based upon his work and his word and it has nothing to do with Abraham and he goes all the way through the great nation of Israel through Jacob and his 12 sons and how they grew into a great nation being in bondage there in Israel God's whole plan bringing them there and they multiplied into millions of people and then Moses came along and delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh brought them to the Mount of Sinai and then entered into the land of Canaan as a great nation. And from that point, they began to grow as a nation, dividing and conquering the lands. And then thus King David arose and he looks back at all that God had done. And he writes this psalm here, 105, and he praises the Lord. And exactly as 105 ends, 106 starts with the same phrase, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And that's a command, that we are to praise the Lord on a daily basis. We are to sing unto the Lord. You know, we we gather together here on a Wednesday night, and we gather to worship God. And and I notice that it's hard for us at times, especially those that work and and serve. And and it almost makes me really want to get back to basics. Um, Do we know how to worship God? Do we know how to praise the Lord? Do we know how to sit in those chairs and put our full focus upon God? And and as I was looking around, I saw that that's hard for some people to do, to really focus on God. And I, I, I almost wanted to stop and just say, you know what? Let's just stop all ministries right now. Why? Because what is important? That we worship God. That's what's important. Uh, our works are nothing. God doesn't need our works. doesn't need our efforts. What he wants is our praises. He wants our hearts. And if our hearts aren't his, and if we're not focused on him, and we don't know how to worship him, something's wrong. Something's wrong in our relationship. Something's wrong with my leadership. With my leadership. If I can't get you to understand that we are to worship God and God alone and nothing else. Probably a couple of years ago, this pastor blew my mind. He was in the same situation in his little church, and he said he stopped all ministries. He, he, he made everybody step down from the ministries, and he says, we're just going to have church. He says, we got rid of all ministries. Uh, nobody did anything but come to church on Sunday morning, and we taught simply how to worship the Lord, how to receive his word, and how to be obedient to his word. He says, and we started from scratch. He goes, because I did that, people left the church. He goes, that's fine. God weeded them out. Because God wants the ones that have a heart for God. That understand it's not our works and what we do. It's how we praise him, how we worship him, how we glorify him. We don't have to work. And if you're working and it's something that is not pleasant to you, stop doing it. Please, don't do it anymore. We don't need it. God doesn't need it. He wants your heart. Because he loves you that much. He's made the covenant. And it's his work. He's paid the price. He's taken care of it all. And all we have to do is sit at his feet and worship him. That's all he desires and wants from us. As you read this psalm, you'll note the tone of the song. Contrary to Psalms 106, which covers the same history, the sin of Israel is never mentioned in this psalm here. These two psalms form a pair. Psalms 105 ends where Psalms 106 begins. The first 16 verses here are interesting in that you find them in Chronicles. And so David writes, I believe it's David, an exhortation to praise God for his covenant. Look at verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. That's evangelism right there. Just give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord and make known his deeds to all the people. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. 
And this is what I was saying earlier. Whose hearts? Those that seek God. Not those who work. Not those who have a ministry. Not those that can't pay attention. But those who seek the heart of God. Rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works. Already three times now. Whose work? His works. His marvelous works. His deeds. His wonderful works. We see that over and over again here. Very clear. Has nothing to do with us, but all to do with what God has done. Isn't that awesome that God has done it all? And we just get to sit back and just say, wow, Lord, thank you so much. That's why I love serving him, because he's done so much for me. But I also love praising him and worshiping him. I love getting on my face and feeling his presence and entering into the throne room of grace. His wonderful works and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. What a beautiful praise song for the works of the Lord. He goes back in history and he begins with the descendants of Abraham and the covenant of God made with Abraham and then with Isaac and then with Jacob, the, the covenant you made with Abraham. And then you... you, you, you reminded Isaac of that same covenant that you had with Abraham and then you reminded Jacob that he also had that same covenant with him and he follows them through all the way to Joseph as they multiply down to the land of Egypt and in Psalms 105 we see this faithfulness of God to the children of Israel his faithfulness now whether whether it's regarding the nation of Israel or our own family we see that God is in control completely god is in total control total control you know when i go down the freeway <clears throat> and i'm going <clears throat> to maybe hem it to a meeting or something i oftentimes use my my cruise control i just hit the button on the little uh, blinker device and then i set the the speed and then i tap it in and there i go i just cruise all the way down there for 45 minutes. Now, it doesn't matter if um, the road turns or dips or it starts to climb. And there's a couple of places it does that. The accelerator will adjust itself, right? It just speeds up. You see it because it's trying to maintain that cruise that you have said. For us as believers, Christ or God in control of our lives is what sets us on the right path. He is what maintains us on the right path. doesn't matter what trials come. doesn't matter what valleys come, what mountain ranges come. You know, God is always there to take control of the situation. He is faithful. You know, there is, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God, Paul said in Romans 8. Nothing. There's no height, there's no depth, there's no power, there's no principality of the heirs, there's no demonic forces. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. He loves us that much because he's in total control. And here David is reminding the children of Israel, look, God has been faithful from Abraham until the land of Canaan, and here we are now as a nation. He will be faithful to us also and so i want to encourage you i don't know if you're a person that likes journals or at least jotting down some things that have gone on in your life and with the lord we were we were looking at um, our anniversary this morning roman and i and i was looking at some old old journal notes and i thought these would probably do good to maybe put on the website and so i went back all the way to 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 uh july 2005 and i found some journal notes in there and at that time i had written down we're going through a famine this was in 2005 i believe it was if i remember correctly we're going through a famine lord what do you want me to do uh, what are you doing you know what should we do and so this was all in this journal that i had written and then 2006 months later or, or five months later came and all of a sudden it, it said we're still in this we're still in this famine, Lord. You know, the church is going through a lot. I may have to go to work. You know, I may have to change some things. We're cutting back. And so I, I, I wrote this stuff down. And here we are 20 years later. You know, and that was back in 2005. 
So God had victory, didn't he? God helped us through that time, that famine. God was victorious. Uh, he got us through for 20 years. And so does that mean that the next 20 years he'll get us through? Of course it does. He is faithful to take care of his people. I encourage you, try writing some things down. You know, If it's on a weekly basis or a daily basis, just a few little words even. You know, God was faithful today. You know, he answered my prayer. He, he helped me out of this situation. You know, I literally prayed for this, and guess what? I got the answer. You know, write this stuff down. And then years later, come back and um, read it and see how God has worked in your life. This cord keeps bugging me. <laughs> Keep kicking it. So, so it, it, you can reflect on the blessings of God that way and how God has been faithful. Uh, there was a lot of other stuff in there that, that I was reading that was interesting. Um, but God has been faithful with us forever and ever. And I look back at the, uh, how God has delivered us through things, uh, the building itself, uh, how we became a Calvary chapel, you know, through various trials and struggles. God has always been faithful. Not me. Not me. Not my wisdom. Because I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying to be faithful with what he's given to me and, and run his work as as best as I can with what I know. Uh, Roman would probably tell you, yeah, he has no idea what he's doing. He's always asking me, what do I think? <laughs> you know, uh, I, I just want to get input and then, Lord, tell me what to do. You know, because I have no idea what I'm doing. But God does. He does. He's God. He knows exactly what he's doing. And so reflect on God's blessings. I guarantee you that you will be encouraged as you realize that the Lord's hand has always been in your life. I don't know if you journal, but I would suggest journaling and see how God works in your life. Let's take uh, this opportunity to give thanks unto the Lord. Um, I'll start off. I have a feeling none of you are going to get up here for some reason, so I'll have to just continue but I'll start off, you know, um, just kind of thinking, you know, hearing all the different thanks throughout the day, because you probably have heard the same ones that I have, whether it's people that you know that are thankful or writing you or calling you, or whether it's Facebook or on the uh, on the websites or emails that are coming down the line, you know, and, and or the, whether it's the end of the year giving. You know, I just got a thing from... Um, from uh, what's his name Jeremiah uh, Dr. Jeremiah um, sent me a, a little newsletter that he sends all the time and it was all about Thanksgiving and it was more Thanksgiving for me because I support him but I've never supported him and, and, and so you're getting all these emails you're getting all these thanks and so it causes you to reflect you know on what we're thankful for and I think I'm always thankful for especially during Thanksgiving for my salvation most of all that I know that if I were to die today that I will be be in heaven. And of course, after that would be, I'm thankful for my wife and she just happens to walk in. So now I can't use any of that stuff that I was going to say. <laughs> but I'm thankful for her. I'm thankful for her, her patience and her love because it hasn't been easy for her. And we really connected this this last uh, anniversary. And it was that we had a great time of just talking, and she was sharing with me how she just feels like like we're refreshed, like we just got married, uh, like it was in the very beginning when we were so in love because we get so busy. And it was just neat to hear that. Um, the Lord's really working in our relationship more than ever before, and I'm thankful for that, that he hasn't let go of us either. And it's work. It's work. It's work on my part because I, I need to let go of a lot of things still, but God is faithful. And so I'm, I'm thankful for my wife. And, of course, for my children, more than anything, I love them to death. I love, I love them so much, uh, they don't even know how much I love them. And yet I can't express that love, you know, at times. But I'm thankful for them and, and for my grandchildren that I love so much. And, of course, my church, <clears throat> the church that, and I don't say my church, but the church I belong to, God's church here. 
so thankful for it because this is this is my home away from my home you know this is where i love to come this is where i love to serve this is where i love to fellowship with with other believers and and get to know uh, them and their families and be a part of their lives um, it, it's such a blessing to see people grow here and i was actually a part of that and then for god's work and what he's doing here you know just even lately what god's doing here adding to the church some key people that um never would have even imagined or thought that uh you know they would have been added uh, speaking with the guy that we're praying with right now who wants to start a church and we're praying and hoping that maybe god's going to lead him to fellowship with us for several years and then send him out <clears throat> it's on his heart and and he needs uh some not necessarily our help but an opportunity and so we we sat down and talked about it and prayed about it together a friend of ours a friend of mine and uh just neat to see again what god is going to do in the future what he has for us in 2015 as we start the next 20 years so a lot to be thankful for right a lot to be thankful for. I was thankful for my yogurt land last night. It was me and Virginia went to go get yogurt. What what grace, right? That's grace. We live in a country where we can go get yogurt, you know, and, and pick out whatever toppings we want, even though the cherries were awful. You know, just, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, and you can choose not to eat them. And <laughs> I did. You know, but that's grace. So much to be thankful. So let's open it up. So let's... um. Let, let's ask you to come up here. If you don't want to come up, I don't want to put you on the spot. You don't have to come up here. Um, but I want you to come on up and just share it with the body here. I think it can be encouraging for them um, because you'll minister to them because they might be going through the same thing or, or be uh, at least experiencing the same thing, and yet they can see the thankfulness that you have uh, because the Lord has been faithful. So if you don't want to come up, then I'll take the mic and I will come to you. And I'll start choosing and going down the line. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So go ahead. Let, let's come on up. We have a mic right here. And um, who's controlling it? <laughs> Nobody is. Come on up, Bob. Okay, sit down. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows me. My name is Bob, and I'm probably a fairly new person to this church. We've only been coming here about four and a half, five months, almost six. But... um. I just wanted to share that this church has really shown a lot of love. And uh, my wife and I have been praying a long time for a church. Uh, we've been involved in several churches, but uh, we, we've been praying for a, a church that was close to us and a small body like this. And uh, my wife is just driving around one day and she sees this sign that says, there's the church and we should, you know, she drove down here to, and she found this church and she said, wow, we need to go check that out. And I said, yeah, let's, let's do that. So uh, the minute we came in these doors, it was just a wonderful experience, you know, just the love that everybody showed. And, and, uh, and I'm really thankful for Reuben's heart and his, his always up here sharing in, uh, in the Word. And though he doesn't always feel like he is, uh, I don't know what you say, but normally, but he is. I think he's an awesome teacher, and, and I, I think we're all blessed to have this guy get up here and share with us every Sunday. He uh, studies and and uh, and he brings out a lot of insight. And I just want to encourage you. You know, uh, since I've been coming here, I've been reading a lot more, and uh, I, I went through the New Testament just recently, and now I'm going through the Old Testament. And I'm telling you, this is really speaking to me. And it's it's. I don't know. I've I prayed for uh, wisdom. You know, I, I really want that wisdom to know, you know, because so, a lot of times you're reading scriptures and you maybe don't really understand what you're reading. But, you know, if you pray to the Lord, he's He's faithful. And, you know, and, and I've I've been getting so much out of just reading and, and, I, and, and so much more is coming back in my in my thoughts, you know, just just uh, I've been bookmarking different scriptures and stuff, and it just really has been a real blessing. And I would encourage anybody out there, if, you, if you're not reading every day, to start. You know, it just start someplace and, and begin reading because God is faithful to meet you right where you are, and uh, 
he can open that stuff up for you. And I want to thank my wife for being here. She's always been very supportive. And uh, she's a fellow musician, and she knows what I go through. And uh, I know kind of what she goes through. And we just uh, are thankful for our music. And that's a gift from the Lord, and we really... We're really blessed in that way. I'm blessed with two young young daughters who are doing really well, and they both love the Lord. And uh, I, I just uh, I'm just so happy to be here in this church. So that's that's what I have to share. There's real no really no order, so you can just step up. Um, I'm I'm blessed to be here too. This this church has really uh, become very precious to us, and um, I back what he what he just said. How we how we ended up here, um, and I'm just uh, walking with Jesus is just such a blessing. I'm so thankful for that. That every day is a, is a new walk, and I just continue to uh, be blessed by that. And and I just pray that the Lord just continues to change me. Um, just big blessings. I don't even know where to start. God is just so good to me. Um, large blessings. Uh, recently, my brother had some botched eye surgery. We have glaucoma really bad in my family, and he had some botched eye surgery, and he basically was legally blind for about eight months. And uh, he just had some other surgery by a guy that knows all about glaucoma and all kinds of stuff uh, about a week ago. And my sister-in-law texted me and said, he found the TV flipper on the couch. He says, I can see the TV. I can see that it's HD. I never saw that before. So we were just like, praise God. We've been praying for this for like, you know, all this time. Um, my son-in-law was without a job for, seemed like forever. And it was just such a torturous struggle. We prayed and prayed and prayed. And he'd get these really bad jobs and just didn't work out, didn't work out. And when it just came to the point of total uh, frustration and, you know, just intercessory prayer to the Lord. This job just dropped in his lap, and it's just a great job. He's a tower tech, and he loves it, and it's just suited to him, and I just couldn't be more thankful to the Lord for that. Um, And then small blessings. Uh, Virginia can tell you that um, one of the ladies in the Bible study here on Wednesday, she um, signed up to bring a turkey tomorrow. And then her husband, his hours were cut and whatever, and she says, I just, I'm not going to be able to do it. I just don't have the money for it. And, and Virginia said, some man just come to the church and says, here, do you want this turkey? And so she says, I'll take that. So she's bringing it cooked tomorrow. You know, that was just a, a small blessing from the Lord. So the big ones and the little ones, I'm thankful. Amen. Hey, you all know who I am. You told me I have to tell you short, so I'm going to keep it short. <laughs> Now, uh, I've been coming here, oh, it was uh, three years, October, this is hard, <laughs> October 22nd, three years, and the way I found the church, walking by, I said, Randy, Pastor Reuben was out here, and I had this magnet that picks up different metals in the driveways and stuff like that, and Pastor Reuben told me, there's nothing in my driveway. Well, I had to prove him wrong. So the next day, he says, why don't you come for our men's breakfast? So I came for the men's breakfast, and they haven't told me to leave yet. <laughs> and hopefully they won't. And I'm not going anywhere. But uh, that's how I ended up coming here. And like I said, I'm not going anywhere. And I keep, Bob was saying, you know, read your Bible. I says, uh, Rudy back there made it easier for me. He hooked me up with an iPod. And it's got all of Chuck Smith's teachings on it. And I'll tell you what, if you can get hooked up with an iPod, that's the way to do it, too. And that's all I have to say, and praise the Lord. Um, I'm thankful for God's mercy and grace on my life. He has shown me so much love by having my wife and my baby girl in my life. I'm thankful that I have my wife, Lucia, who through so much has stuck um, by my side and has tried to show me the love of Christ through her. But I sometimes didn't want to see it, but I do now. I'm thankful for my baby girl that always makes me smile 
because of her innocence and love for Christ. She has been a light in my darkness, in my darkest days. I'm thankful for my church and friends that I know that I can rely on spiritually to support me and guide me. And God is good. Thanks. And since I'm up here, <laughs> like Randy over there, I'm bringing my tissue because <laughs> I'm trying to keep it together. <laughs> it's not easy, like you said, to get up here and and speak in front of people, but let alone, you know, just open yourself and be vulnerable and be, you know, but I'm trying to block you guys out. <laughs> um like you guys were fairly new to the church and we were in different churches before um you know always trying to find that um that home church that closed church and like you shared like i mean i could just everything you were saying you know t um i was just agreeing with you how you walk in like you said and they haven't asked you to leave <laughs> and you kind of want them to <laughs> sometimes, but I'm like, no, just kidding. But um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, you know, you feel the love. You just feel like you belong, and just everyone's help and support and guidance, and you know, spiritual guidance mainly, is just keeps us going, and just you know how everybody here is so friendly and loving and. You know, I'm not close to my family, but everyone here, you know, whether I know you personally or I don't, I see your faces every time I come here. And that's, it's it's a good feeling to know that you guys are there. And so that's what I'm grateful for and thankful for. perspective here I have my notes on my phone but um first I, I'm very thankful for the freedom that we have in this nation to you know praise our Lord and Savior um I spent a lot of time at work which you all know but it's I'm very thankful to be able to praise him freely um when I came back from my maternity leave I had just missed the cutoff for the bonus period, and I'm entitled to that now in this role that I'm in. And so they asked, they told me, like, check your pay stub and everything like that, like, see if you got a bonus. And I don't know, because I came back in the middle of September, which is like this, the middle of our third quarter. And so I checked it, and I had, and I got my bonus, and I couldn't believe it. So it's a pretty good tithe. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But I was so happy that I started crying, and they're like, well, did you need it? I was like, it's not even the money. Like, who doesn't need money? But, like, I'm just so happy that God is so good. Like, and even though we're, we're sinners, you know, and we're not worthy all the time, but it's, he's just so great, you know? So the fact that I'm able to say that at work and not be persecuted for that um, is great. And then not only that, but I have to be at work tomorrow evening. So... A lot of people are dreading it because who wants to be who wants to work on Thanksgiving, but um, they're they're telling me like oh thank you like we're so happy that you're gonna be here because you're so positive but it's not me like I've heard Pastor Owen say before that we just need to be the moon to reflect the light of the sun and I'm so thankful that he's using me that way. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> so um, that's what I'm thankful for is my freedom and the blessings that come along with that. But um, And then also just this church um, and the relationships that I've formed here, not only for myself but for my husband um, and the women that I've met and the spiritual guidance that I've received and not only just like – the spiritual aspect of it, but learning how to make gravy with Miss Virginia and um, Melissa and I and even Lucia is a new face that I've met um, just bonding over our children. Um, so that's always nice because coming out of a lifestyle where it's not very godly and having friends in that 
walk of life and then completely changing it around to where you have people that connect and you guys have the same kind of understanding and mentality when it comes to life and raising your family. Like it's just a completely different experience and support system. So that's what I'm thankful for. Um, my family, like my husband, how driven he is and how passionate he is and my two crazy children <laughs> that I love. My little Dennis the Menace car and then my little cute Ezekiel and then just the support that I have with my family and um the strength that God gives me to just deal with everything throughout my life <laughs> and I'm able to keep a smile on my face <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm thankful for <laughs> there's all of these Christian churches around the world that make up one body but like we say, the families that we, you know, always t would tell God, God, why do we have to be born in families that don't know you? Why can't all the saved people be born in one family and all the unsaved be born in the other families? But of course, we know that we can't be a witness that way. But it hurts. It hurts that we're not close with our, 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 our worldly families. But, you know, we build these these relationships and and over the years even though people have come and gone you and you have those relationships and it's so wonderful though because God has really shown me this past few years how he takes broken lives and makes them new that I have this song that I do with the kids and I love the part of it it says that um, he takes broken lives and makes them new and we have gotten the privilege of seeing that over and over and over again not only in our own lives our own families but in every family that comes to this church, every person who comes to this church, we see God do amazing things. And, and I have to say that this past year, I think that God has opened my eyes to that, even more so than what I used to see. But it's like a, it's such an amazing thing to me now. And I just praise him for letting us not be so busy in life. It's like more and more I find myself saying, you know what, God, I see these things don't matter over here. Help me to stay focused on you because the time is short. And it's like more and more this past year I see that. The time is short. I see all these people around us. You drive down the street and you see thousands of people driving by you. How many of them are going to heaven and how many are not? And that we have that opportunity to be a witness for them, to be that light, even if it's just our neighbors seeing us going to church every Sunday and every Wednesday until they have that opportunity to ask us, wow. You know, in fact, I just heard someone say that, that their neighbor ended up being saved. And I can't remember who it was. I thought it was someone in this church, but I'm not sure. That their neighbor ended up accepting the Lord because they saw them every week going to church, so committed to the Lord. And it caused them to think about how what they thought about God and, and God in their life. And it was a witness. And so for us, just how God is using us in our families and our neighborhoods, you know, people would just cross paths with maybe one time in the story. You say a few words to them and you don't know how those words impact them, how those words are going to change our lives. And so just I'm thankful to God that he has just opened my eyes to see that even more so this year. The time is short and, you know, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few and we have to be out there. And just that urgency. So I just praise God for that, for allowing us to be here in this church with all you guys. And like it's been said, the relationships that we make and the families that we get to be part of. You know, I have a whole different perspective than you guys. When when you're in the classroom and these kids are coming in, when I'm doing worship on Sunday mornings and those kids are just filtering in one at a time and they come in, they come in with smiles on their faces. They come in, especially the little ones, hi, hi, I'm here. And they're hugging each other. They are like a family unto themselves. They, all of them, they, they have bonds here that, that you guys don't even realize. But when you're in the classroom and you see them, they're all like little brothers and sisters in the Lord in there. It is, it is so precious. And I praise God that I even get to see that. These kids are such a blessing. So if you've thought about teaching, there's a good opportunity. So anyway, that's all I have to say. I'm Roger. I've been coming here ever off and on for about four and a half years. And the biggest thing I'm thankful for is this church. Because um, a lot of times I will be, have in my mind, I have no place to go. And I'll get depressed and say, you know what? You do have a place to go. And that's here. You know, I used to serve and do worship here. Um, but the biggest thing is, is, is I have you guys. 
you know, I have, I've, if I need somebody to talk to, you can, I can always call Randy, Modesto, Moses. I have, there's always somebody I can talk to. There's absolutely no reason why anybody here, including myself, should be de uh, depressed because we have our Heavenly Father to go to. There's, because we, all we've got to do is get on our knees and pray and talk to Him because it's just a conversation with God and just saying, Lord, I need your help. And I'm thankful that we have a Heavenly Father that, had his, that his son died on the cross so we can talk to him. And that's what I'm thankful for. So we have somebody that we can talk to, we can come here and we can rejoice and we can and sing and give him praise. And then tomorrow we can give him thanks. So come here and give him thanks with a smile on your face, and, and when people come here tomorrow, th shake their hand and just let them know that Jesus is in your heart. So that's what i got to say. Well, thanks the Lord. I don't speak that very good English, so I'm just going to make it short. I just want to, I just want to thanks to my King, my Lord and Savior for, first of all, for, getting me out of the darkness where I was before and just thinking about uh, all my life uh, where I grew up in Mexico and all the things I went through. And uh, just thinking about all that, I, even though that I wasn't a believer in the Lord in those times, I just can see the Lord, uh, the hand of God, uh, just preparing the time for me to even to come to this country. And it's been a blessing. Here's where I get to know the Lord. And... Uh, I wanted to, I, I have shared with many uh, brothers and, and sisters in the Lord about one specific uh, thing that I want to, I always want to give thanks to the Lord. It was uh, the prayer that he had answered about when I was praying, praying for that I wanted to have a, a daughter. I only had three boys, and my wife and I, we were getting uh Passing the age, I don't know, getting old, and and I wanted to have a daughter so bad, and I and I, I was praying for like probably like twelve years, and uh, and I thought uh, that the the time passed by, and I thought the Lord wasn't gonna answer that prayer, and uh, and when I give up on praying, and that's when I didn't want to have no no kids anymore. That's when the <laughs> Lord gave us Naomi, and uh, so just keep on praying for whatever you are, keep on praying. Just, uh, just keep in mind that the Lord is faithful, and just, just have a confidence that He will answer our prayers. And that's that's what I wanted to share with you guys. That okay, so I want to just say that I'm. His grace. It's been a rough two years. Um, and my friends here know, you know, and they've been encouraging me. And I'm so thankful for that because I could fall away, you know, so easily. <laughs> And I have my moments, but I'm so thankful for God's grace because every day is a struggle and every day is a fail for me. But he just takes me in and, like, holds me, you know. I'm so thankful for the children's ministry. My kids, my kids love God. You know, I'm thankful for you, Virginia, because I see the growth that they have and they encourage me. My kids, I learned from my kids, you know, hearing them talk about the pictures that they're drawing. Um, Hannah telling me about Hannah, telling me about people I don't even know. And that's sad, you know. <laughs> and, you know, they see me crying. My, uh, my dad just got diagnosed with colon cancer. And I just found this out. So the time that I found out, I just fell apart. My little boy is 
say, Mommy? <laughs> Give it to God. God's going to protect him. He's going to go to heaven. And he doesn't know. He doesn't know anything. You know, but he has faith in God. They have, they have this unfailing faith. And, and it helps me. It helps me get through things. Through every day. So, I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful for my ministry. <laughs> Don't take it away. <laughs> um, I'm thankful for it because um, it holds me accountable. You know, um, me serving here at my church when, when I feel like, you know, I just want to give up, you know, or walk away with the trials in our lives. You know, um, I think about, you know, coming here, what I'm doing, how I'm serving in the church and how people see me, you know, and how I'm supposed to minister to other people, regardless of whether it's just cooking food, you know or serving, you know, people see that, and they do see it as a fight, you know, so I'm thankful for everybody here. I know all the individual different relationships and the people that I have yet to make relationships with, and I'm thankful for my husband. <coughs> Things have been not perfect, no marriage, no relationship is, but he's very patient with me because I'm mean. I don't look mean, <laughs> but I know people say I look innocent or whatever, but I'm, look at him. He's like shaking his head. I'm mean, you know, and especially, you know, our women's stuff, you know, like I get meaner. <laughs> so it's quiet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, before I go anymore, I was <laughs> That's it. I'm thankful. Very thankful. Um, I just want to start off by saying that, man, I'm so thankful for all you guys. Uh, I learn a lot from you guys. Uh, this church is, you know, it's been said before, but this church knows how to serve. This church has servants, and we were, you know, we were counting over everyone that's going to be involved in the ministry meeting this uh, this next month. And we had like 40 names on the list of people that are just serving, you know, week in and week out here. And uh, you guys know we don't have much more than that that go here. So uh, that's a pretty awesome thing to have that many people, uh, you know, just serving the Lord. And, and we definitely learn a lot from you guys, and you guys are so awesome. And uh, I'm just so thankful for my family uh, here at the church and being able to come back and serve and and uh, it's just humbling. It really is. Uh, I'm thankful for, thankful for my dad. Uh, he's never given up. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a crybaby, man. You guys don't. You guys don't make it easy. My dad's never given up. Twenty years. We're celebrating the anniversary here, and uh, you know, just talking with him today. It's been a rough twenty years uh, for him in the ministry, for this church, for a lot of people that have been in this church, and. Uh, I don't know why he's still here. <laughs> I really don't. It's just the Lord. So, um, you know, I'm just so thankful for that. It, it's just, it really is just so humbling, you know, to be able to serve the Lord. And I'm thankful for my wife, of course. She's sitting in the back, so uh, I'm very thankful for her. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, even though all of you thought it was a girl, uh, it's a boy. Other than Lucia, sorry, Lucia. Uh, I'm so thankful that we're going to have a boy. It's just awesome, and, and it's just, uh, it just blows my mind, you know, just everything just starts rushing through your mind, having a boy, uh, the things that you get to teach it, you know, you get to teach it everything you know about, you know, sports, you know, which for me isn't much, you know, so it's going to take a couple hours, you know, and we'll be done, but um, you get to teach it ministry, and that's, that's the awesome thing uh, to just think about that, just the plans that God has for him. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm thankful for. Praise the Lord. Okay. Anybody else before I close? Any of the youth? Gabby, why are you hiding over there? 
is there any youth that's brave enough to get up here? It's able to say, it's not about me. It's about God. You know, he's a lot bigger than you. Anybody? <clears throat> All right, well, thanks for, for coming out and uh, making this night very, very special. I was more than moved by <clears throat> all your your beautiful words and what God is doing in your life. <clears throat> it's amazing. He's a good God. And yet, <clears throat> moved by so much uh, of your own personal struggles and hurts and, and that you uh, are trusting in the Lord with even all those things. So it's good to hear from my perspective because I don't always hear hear those things uh, from people. So more prayer <clears throat> on your behalf and trust in God and what he's going to do. So let's go ahead and close up in prayer. I know a lot of you will be here tomorrow. And if not, uh, you know, maybe send someone. Just come out and just enjoy the day, fellowshipping and eating with us too because we're all going to partake of the, the blessings tomorrow also. So. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we love you. We just love you, Lord. You are so good. You have been so <clears throat> kind to us, Lord. So forgiving. So patient, Lord. <clears throat> And Lord, you have given us the strength, Father, to endure through the things that we have encountered, Lord, whether it's blindness or, or hurts or pains, <clears throat> suffering, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for always being there, always having your arm stretched out towards us, Lord, and never forgetting and never leaving us, Lord. We give you glory, Lord, and honor, Lord. We thank you again for all that uh, that you're doing here, Lord, and what you're going to do, Lord, in our lives together, Lord. Father, I pray for, for unity and for strength for all of us, that we may continue to be strong in, in serving you and you, Lord, and doing this together, Father, until the day you return, Lord. That 20 years from now, Lord, all of us can still be here, and I'm sure, Lord, added people, Lord, that we can all just agree, Lord, that you have done a great work, Lord. And so we look forward, Lord, to what you're going to be doing, Lord, tomorrow and the souls you'll be saving, the people that we'll be meeting, Lord, the opportunities, Father, to just share the love of Jesus with them, Lord. And if that's all we can do, Lord, that, that's a lot, Lord, to plant seed in water, Lord. I thank you again for everything, Lord. And we give you this night, Lord, and we thank you for making it special, Lord, and for being here among us, Lord. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.